Bertram and Anna. By Thomas Gent Stranger. If thou e'er didst love, if nature in thy bosom glows, a minstrel, rude, may haply move, thine heart to sigh for Anna's woes. Lo, beneath the humble tomb, obscure the luckless maiden sleeps. Round it pity's flowers bloom, or it memory fondly weeps. And ever be the tribute paid, the warm, heart's sympathetic flow, richer by far, ill-fated maid, than all the shadowy pomp of woe, the shadowy pomp to thee denied, while pity bade thy spirit rest, while superstition scowled beside, and vainly bade it not be blessed. Ah, could I with unerring truth, inspired by memory's magic power, portray thee, gracked and ripening. Youth, with new enchantment, every hour. When fortune smilled, and hope was young, and hailed thee like the bounteous May, renewing still thy steps among the faded flowers of yesterday. All plaintive, then my lute should sound, while fancy sight thy form to see. The listening maids should weep around, and swains lament thy fate with me. And, stranger, thou who hearst the tale, by soft infection taught to mourn, wouldst wet with tears the primrose pale, that blooms beside her sylvan urn. For she was fair as forms of love, oft by the rapt enthusiast seen, who slumbers midst the myrtle grove, with spring's unfolding blossoms green. All eloquent, her eyes expressed her, heart to each fine feeling true, for in their orbs did pity rest, suffusing soft their beamy blue. And silence, pleased, his reign resigned, whene'er he heard her vocal tongue, and grief in slumber's sweet reclined, as on his ear its accents hung. But vain the charms that grack the maid, the eye where pity loved to reign, the form where fascination played, the voice that breathed enchantment, vain, unequal, all their seer and power, to win from fate its frown away. When Bertram came in luckless hour to sigh, to flatter, to betray, he came, informed in every art, that makes tincautious virgin weep, beguiles the unsuspecting heart, and lulls mistrust to silken sleep. His tale she heard, nor thought the while, that falsehood such a tale could tell, that dark deceit could e'er defile, the tongue that talked of truth so well. He wooed, he wept, till all was wan, then, as the spring-born zephyrs fly, he fled, he left her, lost. Undone, in penitential tears to die. Oh, could she live, condemned to feel, the insults of exulting scorn? Relentless is the three-edged steel, illicit pleasure's eldest born, who, mid despair's impervious gloom, should bid her soul's sad wanderings cease, to extinguished spark of hope reloom, and soothe the penitent to peace? She saw her aged mother bow, subdued by exquisite distress, for every hope was faded. Now, and life a weary wilderness, she saw her in the cold earth laid, and not a tear was seen to start, and not a sigh the pangs allayed, that agonized her bursting heart. And when the mournful rite was done, a sculptured woe, she seemed to move, as close she clasped her infant son, the pledge of faithless Bertram's love. While, slow she packed the lone churchyard, with pity's accents, soft and sad, we strove to win her fixed regard, but vainly strove, for Anne was mad. Lorn, listless, like a withered flower, blown o'er the plain by every blast, impelled by fancy's fitful power, the lovely, luckless, victim passed. Till, left alone, the wood she sought, where first. Her Bertram's vows she heard, and first with soft affection fraught, his vows returned, to heaven preferred. Each scene she tracked, to memory dear, though memory lent a feeble ray, reason's benighted bark to steer, throw, dark distraction's stormy way. At length, where yon translucent tide, meanders slow the meads among, reclining on its s edgy side, thus to her sleeping babe she sung, sweet cherub, on the green bank rest, and balmy may thy slumbers be. For tempests tear thy mother's breast, alas! It cannot pillow thee, all wander, till thy sire I've found. I'll lure his footsteps where you lie, while mantling waters murmur round, and wild winds sing your lullaby. Haply, shalt thou, his scorn subdue, 
thy helpless innocence to save. But if unmoved, he turns from you. I'll lead him to my mother's grave. Sure, waken there. Remorse shall rise. And bid his perjured bosom shed. That tender tear. My heart denies. Cold, icy cold. Congealed, and dead. Then, wildly through each well-known way again she. Fled. The youth to seek. Nor paused. Till Cynthia's mournful ray. Played palely on her paler cheek. Once more she sought the river's side the goal of her accomplished way, where, whelmed beneath the rising tide, her heart's dissevered treasure lay. Amazed, convulsed, she shrieked, she sprung, she clasped it in its watery bed, the dirge, of death the night blast sung, the morn, in tears, beheld them dead. Their pale remains with pious care, beneath the vernal turf we laid. Remembrance loves to linger there, and weep beneath the willow shade. And oft, the fairest flowers of spring, what time the hours of toil are spent, the village youths and virgins bring, to grace her. Moss-clad monument.